Hi, I'm Robert Rieke, and this is the Manhattan Wood Project. Before I start talking about the project, uh, the French cleats I built behind me, I'm going to talk a little bit about the weather. We're getting a lot of rain uh, with hot days in between, and every time it rains, it seems that we get hail too. In the last couple weeks, I've replanted the garden twice, and each time I start to get some seedlings, the hail shows up and just wipes them out. So I think I'm getting ready to give up on the garden this year, which really sucks. Anywho, this video is about the French cleats behind me. Two weeks ago, the wall behind me looked like this. It had stuff hung up on pegboard, but it was hard to get stuff without dropping hooks or bumping something else. I also didn't realize until I took the pegboard down just how much brighter the garage was with this white wall exposed instead of having uh, the brown pegboard back here. So why did I choose to use French cleats? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, they're easy to build. Really, it doesn't get much easier than this. They're cheap. I was able to use 2x4s and half-inch plywood, all of which I had either in the scrap pile or just sitting in my, uh, I guess my lumber shed, you could call it now, since there's so much extra 2x4s in there. It has easy access, like pegboard, but it's really hard to make stuff fall down. I mean, look how solid this stuff is, and that's a lot of weight on there. Everything on here is more visible than it would be if I put them in cabinets. And if they were in cabinets, there'd be a whole lot more horizontal surface area, a lot more places for dust to get to. And this, I can take uh, compressed air, blow all this down, and very few things will go flying around. Just the lighter things like my little push sticks up here. So it's going to be easy to clean, uh, easy to get everything. And it's also a lot easier to rearrange these things than it is to rearrange on pegboard. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how I built these, because there are some great videos out there by folks like Jay Bates, April Wilkerson, and Saline and such. But here's the basic process that I used. I ripped a few 2x4s in the middle at a 45 degree angle. For the wall mounts, I drilled 3 quarter inch holes just to fit the lag bolt heads, washers, and the socket I was using to attach them. Drilled 5 16 inch holes all the way through and then mounted the boards on the wall in studs. For the individual cleats, I cut some scrap half-inch plywood into strips about three and a quarter inches wide and used glue and brads to attach them to the other parts of the 2x4s. The plywood may not have been necessary, but I felt it would help to kind of lock it in place and provide a little more protection against it falling out. After the glue dried, I designed individual mounts and cut the cleats from the long uh, cleats that already had the plywood glued on them. If I was going to mount something heavy on a dowel, I would double up the plywood so the dowel was glued into an inch of material. For items like clamps, I would drill holes at the ends of the fingers, use my bandsaw to cut them out, and then I would glue and brad that piece of plywood to the top of the cleat. For me, the hardest part of this project was trying to decide what to hang up and what not to. I have a toolbox that I want to keep tools like screwdrivers and wrenches in, but April Wilkerson has a French cleat design for uh, wrenches and sockets that just looks awesome. It's hard not building that just because I still want to keep my toolbox. So I also had to decide what could go underneath my workbench, like uh, big tools, uh, sanders, circular saws and such, and what could be mounted up here. I decided a lot of what I would mount behind me here would be stuff that I use with the shopsmith or things that are easy to mount and quick to take off and use, like clamps. It's definitely hard not looking at every single item and making a mount for it. Fortunately, at the moment, I don't have too much more room on this section of wall. I'd originally mounted some shorter French cleats over by my paint locker just to kind of temporarily hold stuff. Well, I actually kind of like the idea of keeping some of the stuff there. I have my levels, uh, my big squares, my rubber mallets, and about half of my spray cans mounted up on that rack. I was originally planning on putting all my spray cans up there, and I thought that I only had about a dozen cans of spray paint and spray finish. But then when I started clearing out the shop here, I'd find a can of white spray paint over here. I'd find some black over here. I'd find the gold and silver that I used for the pirate chest bank. Uh, somewhere else and uh, I ended up having about two dozen cans of spray whatever. There's still a few things that I need to make some French cleats for like my big wooden uh, hand screw clamps 
but I'm just happy to have all of this stuff segregated, uh, easy to access on the wall, off the floor, and available for use right now. So I can make more French cleats as I need to. So one of my next big projects is going to be a chop saw cart that has some lumber and sheet good storage integrated into it. But before I can do that, I need to uh, make some room in this garage. I don't have quite enough room to build a good cart yet. So we're going to be moving a freezer out of the way and taking ladders, putting them in a shed. So my next project is going to be a temporary lumber rack, which I'm just going to build out of 2x4s and scrap half inch plywood. It'll be cheap and easy and just like the French cleats behind me, I'm going to basically take some designs that others have used, modify them a little bit. So it's not going to be an in-depth video, but it'll be enough to get me some more room in my workshop here. These lumber racks are supposed to be temporary, but they may be five year temporary or temp permanent, kind of like my uh, smaller French cleats that I made. But ultimately the goal is to make them cheap, quick, and easy, just like me. I want to take a moment and thank all of my subscribers, especially my new subscribers. Uh, a couple months ago I only had 50 subscribers, if that. Now I have almost 200. And that's nothing compared to people like Steve Ramsey, who has 256,000 subscribers. But the fact that nearly 200 of you are following me and are interested in what I'm building, that blows my mind. So I hope to keep giving you good, fresh content, uh, easy projects, neat projects, fun stuff. I'll do my best to make your subscription worth it. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click on the saw blades up here, or you can click on the subscribe link below. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash manhattanwoodproject or on my blog at manhattanwoodproject.com. I post project updates and pictures up there a whole lot more than I post videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you on the next project. Oh, somebody's in trouble. Not me, I hope. And here's some company. Hi.